Catching bad actors often need sophisticated tools, but sometimes we can outsmart them using as simple as this. Canary tokens are like traps for hackers that notify you if they try to access any digital resource you own. An example of these digital things can be a file or a folder, or maybe some unconventional sensitive data such as cloud credentials or database dumps. Canary token is an old technology, and there are several videos out there about this, but most of them only show you the traditional tokens. So in this video, we will explore some of the unique and interesting tokens out there. Before diving into the unique tokens, let's have a very quick demo on how Canary tokens work for the benefit of others who are not familiar with this. Let's open Chrome and look for Canary tokens. CanaryTokens.org is the most popular token provider out there, but there are others you can use. As we see, there are different tokens available here. Let's try a very simple one, which is a DNS token. The idea here is that an email will be sent to you if someone tried to access your DNS address, meaning someone performed a DNS resolution on the A record. I don't want to use my personal email address, so let's use a disposable email service. This is something very useful if you just want to try out things in the web. Let's wait for it to load. Typically, these kind of services are free, so you expect that there will be ads or page access is slow, so be patient. Okay, we got our email. Let's copy this and put this on the DNS Canary token. Let's put some reminders. There are various kinds of tokens, and they are not easily identified because of their unusual names. So adding a useful reminder like this, I would say, is a must if you are managing multiple tokens. Our record has been created. Let's go to the terminal and try to resolve it. We can see a data inside the answer section, meaning it is resolvable. So we should expect a notification. So let's go back to our disposable email. We got the message in our inbox. Let's open it. We see here the source IP address, as well as the time and date. If we go to the alert history, we will see how many times the Canary token got triggered and the location. So this is how Canary tokens work in general. It will give you these information every time a token gets activated. Now let's try some interesting tokens. Let's try first the AWS Canary token. AWS is the leading cloud provider and many services are hosted here. That makes it a valuable target for attackers. One common way of authenticating to AWS is via the access keys. We can create a Canary token that will mimic a real access keys, which we can put on our laptop. We'll use again a disposable email to receive our notifications. Let's copy the keys and store it on our credentials file. A typical way of using these keys is by executing any AWS command on the terminal. Let's try accessing the S3 service and see if we can list any buckets. We have this error, which is expected since this is just a dummy key and doesn't really used in any real AWS resource. We don't see any notification yet on our email, but let's try again a few times. Probably there is a delay in receiving our notifications because we are only using a disposable email. We got a notification, but only one. Let's go to the alert history. We try to use the access keys four times, but we only see three occurrence here. Probably this is a downside of Canary tokens. There might be a chance where we will miss a notification if the token is being accessed multiple times in succession. Next one we want to try is the Kubernetes Canary token. Kubernetes is the most popular container orchestration platform. It can host a variety of services such as web applications and databases, which also make it a common target for attackers. The credentials used is called a cube config file. Let's create a cube config Canary token. After creating, we will automatically download the file. Let's go to the terminal and use it. Talking to a Kubernetes cluster needs a kubectl binary. We can specify the cube config via this parameter. As a cluster administrator, typically I would like to see the nodes running. So let's execute git nodes. We got an error, which is expected since this is just a dummy token. But same as usual, this should trigger a backend process that will generate an alert to us. So let's go back to our temporary email. We got a notification. Aside from the usual source IP and timestamp, we also see other information here, like the version of kubectl used and the Kubernetes API endpoint. Just a quick tip, Kubernetes also published resources under slash APIs. Now let's try my SQL dumps. Databases often contain confidential data such as user credentials. This make it another valuable target for attackers. So it just makes sense as well to lure attackers on a fake database. We have two options here. 
First is we can execute the following prepared statements inside our database, dump it, and leave it somewhere for the attacker. Second is more simpler, which is a pre-built database dump containing the token. Let's try the second approach. Going back to our terminal, let's uncompress the dump file. Then to make this fake dump realistic, we can name it to something interesting for the attackers. So how about a database for user credentials? We use DB01 because this is a typical database naming convention among organizations. To simulate an attacker trying to import this dump to his own server, let's launch a MySQL Docker container. Then let's upload the dump file there inside slash Tim. Let's go inside the container. And restore the dump file. During this process, the prepared statements containing the token will be executed, which then will trigger an email notification to us. The restore is done, so let's go to our temporary email. We got a notification. So fake database dumps like this is another effective way of luring attackers to gather information about them. If you are finding this information valuable, please support my channel by subscribing and liking this video. Let's try WireGuard. WireGuard is a VPN tunnel that secures your traffic to a network. If a WireGuard config was compromised, an attacker can act on behalf of the intended user to access confidential resources such as company data. Attacker can also drop malware on the company network, which can cause greater harm. Due to its importance, a fake WireGuard config is another good way to lure and catch bad actors. The instruction on how to use this generated config is not clear, so I will show you a quick way to test this. First is we need to install the WireGuard package. WireGuard needs a dedicated network interface. Typically, it will be WG0. So we will create a config file using that as the file name. Then inside will be the fake config. If you see here, we don't have the WireGuard interface yet. That will appear once we start this systemd service. During startup, we expect to receive an email notification indicating that our WireGuard config is being used somewhere. In summary, VPN configurations is another good way of deceiving attackers since these files often give them access to secure networks. For the next token, let's try a simple one, which is WebDAB folder. WebDAB was designed to allow people to modify websites using HTTP. This is typically used in Windows environment. WebDAB is not as secure compared to other remote storage servers, so leaving a fake credential somewhere will definitely catch eyes of attackers. There are multiple options to test this token, but the simplest way is just to access the WebDAB site using the browser. Typically, you will leave this fake credentials in one of your personal folders. Name it something interesting. Then once an attacker tries to access this, we should receive an email notification. Let's look for another token. Let's try SVN. Subversion is another kind of version control system. Although not widely used as Git, it is still used by some notable companies like Google. This still makes it a valuable target for attackers. The token works by setting this SVN property inside a project. Once it is checked out, SVN will try to check out the Canary URL, which will trigger an email notification to us. Let's go to the terminal to see this in action. I already prepared an SVN server on my Kali. It's kind of tricky to set this up since SVN is an old technology and the resources are often outdated already. But I'll give you some idea on how this works. There is an Apache web server running inside my Kali that is using a subversion module to serve the projects over HTTP. So instead of referencing the SVN server using this syntax, we will use this. In order to add the SVN property on a project, we need to first clone it. Unlike Git, Cloning a project is done by using the checkout command. Then we will just execute the command we got from the Canary token site. SVN properties add characteristics and alter behavior when interacting with the project. Once we add that property, we need to commit the changes. If not, an attacker cloning your project won't be able to get the updated changes containing the Canary token. We can verify if it's added using the following command. Now that we added the property, let's simulate an attacker that is trying to clone your project. During this checkout process, Subversion is trying to connect to the Canary token link we added on the property. We got an error, but this is expected since the property contains dummy value only and not a real Subversion repository. Let's verify if we receive the email notification. We got one so meaning the token we set is working properly. There are still a lot of interesting tokens here. Some has a high chance of catching an attacker. Others are classic technique, but still proven to be effective. 
There are also other tokens that doesn't really make sense and easy to bypass. But have you wondered how these tokens work? It is obvious that these tokens are reaching to the Canary site to trigger the email notification. For example, how does credentials like these can trigger a back-end connection? What is inside a fake SQL dump file? Where exactly are the Canary URLs embedded? These things are not documented, so it will be interesting to find out ourselves. If you want a deep dive on these tokens, stay tuned for our next video.